the once mighty Denobulan Empire was on its knees, begging for help at the hands of the bloodthirsty Klaxon Horde as they were being pummeled mercilessly in their centuries-long war deep in the Theta Quadrant. Bruce Adams, a battle-hardened human veteran and strategic mastermind, stared in disbelief at Neron, the high-ranking Denobulan official pleading on the vid screen. The Klaxons were mere weeks away from eviscerating the last of the Denobulan forces and enslaving their entire civilization. If they conquer us, your world is next, Bruce. They will not stop until they dominate every last inch of this galaxy. Bruce slammed his whiskey glass down and gritted his teeth. What exactly can humanity do against this galactic menace, Neron? How am I supposed to convince my people to join your losing war? Neron's eyes flickered with a mix of desperation and dwindling hope. We need your tactical brilliance, Bruce. Study our enemy. Find their weaknesses. And we need your human warriors, your advanced weapons and ships. You are our last chance. Without you, it's only a matter of time before the Klaxons set their conquering eyes on Earth. The gruff soldier rubbed his scarred chin and sighed heavily. He knew he couldn't just let the peaceful Denobulans fall, not when his own race would be next on the Klaxons' hit list. But one look at the tactical screen showing the Denobulan Klaxon front told him all he needed to know. The Denobulans were hopelessly, laughably outgunned in every way. The Klaxons had them beat in numbers, weapons, ships, and pure brutality. Conventional tactics would be useless. Bruce would have to dig deep, get creative, and hit the Klaxons in ways they'd never expect. As he started to devise the first threads of an audacious strategy, he fired off an encrypted message to his superiors back on Earth. They needed to send their most cutting-edge ships, weapons, and badass troops. This wasn't just about saving the Denobulans anymore. This primitive, docile alien race was the only thing standing between the vicious Klaxons and humanity itself. Now, the fate of Earth rested on Bruce's ability to outthink and outfight a centuries-old warmongering empire. When humans stepped onto the galactic stage and truly joined this war, Bruce would make damn sure it ended in mere days. For the Denobulans, and for humanity itself, failure was not an option. Bruce's audacious strategies and the valor of his human warriors had turned the tide. The once unstoppable Klaxon horde crumbled beneath the onslaught of human ingenuity and firepower. In mere weeks, the Klaxons were suing for peace, their conquering ambitions shattered. In the aftermath, Bruce worked hand in hand with Neron to establish a multinational peacekeeping force on the war ravaged Denobulan worlds. Human engineers and medics poured in to rebuild decimated cities and treat the wounded. Trust between the two races grew as they labored together to restore what the Klaxons had destroyed. But even as hope bloomed, darkness lingered. On a routine patrol, Bruce and his squad discovered troubling evidence, encrypted transmissions and suspicious energy readings emanating from Theron, a remote barren moon. Niran, you need to see this, Bruce said grimly, pointing at the readouts. Niran's eyes widened as he absorbed the data. They quickly assembled a covert recon team and slipped past Theron's meager orbital defenses. What they found sent ice through their veins. Hidden beneath Theron's lifeless surface was a sprawling klaxon base, pulsing with activity. Infiltrating under the cover of darkness, Bruce and Niran made a chilling discovery. The base was under the command of Kraxus, a notorious Klaxon warlord. Kraxus had gone rogue, refusing to accept the Horde's defeat. Fanatical warriors loyal to him were stockpiling weapons and ships for a devastating counteroffensive. At the heart of the base, they found something even more terrifying. Kraxus was constructing a prototype doomsday weapon, a planet killer. Bruce's blood ran cold as he realized the implications. They had to stop this madman before he could reignite the war and unleash unimaginable destruction. Bruce fired off an urgent encoded message to Admiral Hawkins, calling for reinforcements. But they couldn't wait for backup. Every second gave Kraxus more time to complete his device. We have to delay them, Bruce whispered to Neron. Sabotage their key systems. Buy ourselves some time until help arrives. They split up, planting explosive charges at critical junctions. But as Bruce armed the final detonator, 
Alarms pierced the air. They'd been discovered. Klaxon warriors flooded the corridors. Plasma rifles blazing. Niran, fall back! Bruce roared over the chaos, unleashing a barrage of suppressive fire. They fought their way through the Klaxon onslaught, dodging searing plasma bolts and shrapnel. At last, they burst out onto the airfield, dashing for a Klaxon shuttle. Pulse rounds pinged off the hull as Bruce frantically powered up the engines. They rocketed off the surface, narrowly outpacing the base's anti-air defenses. As the shuttle tore through Theron's thin atmosphere, Bruce glimpsed fireballs erupting across the base behind them. Their charges had detonated. He could only hope it would be enough to slow Craxus's deadly project. Now safely away, Bruce set course for Denobula with the crucial intelligence in hand. The fight was a long way to go. Craxus was still out there, and his doomsday weapon inched closer to completion with each passing moment. But now they knew the threat they faced. And Bruce would be damned if he'd let that fanatic shatter the fragile peace they'd bought with so much blood. Bruce Adams stood on the bridge of the Endeavor, gazing out at the vast expanse of uncharted space before him. The years since the defeat of Craxus had been filled with rebuilding, and strengthening the alliance between humans and Denobulans. Now, they embarked on a new chapter together. Exciting, isn't it? Niran said, joining Bruce at the view screen. Who knows what we'll discover out here? Bruce nodded, a hint of a smile on his weathered face. Let's hope it's nothing that wants to kill us this time. As they ventured deeper into unexplored territory, the Endeavor's sensors picked up an unusual reading. Captain, we're detecting a massive debris field ahead, reported Lieutenant Chen from her station. On screen, Bruce ordered. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a graveyard of twisted metal and shattered hulls stretching as far as the eye could see. It was clear that an epic battle had taken place here long ago. My God, Neron breathed. What happened here? Bruce turned to his science officer. Analysis? Sir... Initial scans indicate the debris is extremely old. Thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of years. And the level of technology, it's far beyond anything we've ever encountered. Take us in closer, Helm. Full sensor sweep, Bruce commanded. As they carefully navigated through the debris field, they stumbled upon something extraordinary. The mostly intact wreckage of an alien vessel, unlike any they'd seen before. Sir, I'm detecting faint power readings from within that ship. Chen reported. And there's a data core. It's damaged, but still functional. Bruce and Niran exchanged glances. This could be the discovery of a lifetime. Prep and away, team, Bruce said. We're going aboard. Hours later, Bruce and Niran huddled around a holographic display in the Endeavor's lab, poring over the partially reconstructed data from the alien core. This is incredible, Niran said, eyes wide with excitement. These progenitors, as they called themselves, their scientific achievements were staggering. Bruce nodded, equally impressed. And look at this star chart. It seems to indicate the location of their homeworld. They studied the information in silence for a moment before Bruce spoke again. We have to follow this, Niran. The potential benefits to both our peoples, to the entire galaxy, it's too great to ignore. Niran hesitated. It could be dangerous. We don't know what we might find. When has that ever stopped us before? Bruce replied with a grin. And so, the Endeavor set a course into the depths of unexplored space, following the trail left behind by an ancient, vanished civilization. For weeks they traveled, pushing the limits of their state-of-the-art starship. Finally, they emerged in a remote star system. At its heart, a dying red giant cast a dim eerie light across the void. Sir, I'm picking up energy readings, Chen reported. Faint, but definitely artificial in origin. Source? Bruce asked, leaning forward in his chair. Chen's fingers danced across her console. It's, it's coming from some kind of structure in orbit around the star, putting it on screen now. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a sight that left the entire bridge crew speechless. An enormous structure hung in space before them, easily dwarfing their ship. Its design was alien and inscrutable, 
all sweeping curves and impossible geometries that seemed to defy the laws of physics. My God, Niran whispered. What is it? Bruce stood, his eyes never leaving the screen. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Prep and away, team. The shuttle ride to the megastructure was tense with anticipation. As they drew closer, the true scale of the construct became apparent. It was easily the size of a small moon, perhaps larger. They docked at what appeared to be an airlock, the shuttlecraft, looking like a speck against the vast alien architecture. Bruce led the way, tricorder in hand, as they stepped into the unknown. The interior was a maze of vast chambers and twisting corridors filled with technology beyond their comprehension. Holographic displays flickered to life as they passed, showing glimpses of alien worlds and incomprehensible equations. This place, Niran said in awe, it's not just a structure, it's a repository, a library of their entire civilization. As they delved deeper into the facility, they began to uncover disturbing information. The progenitors hadn't simply died out or abandoned their empire. They had fallen in a cataclysmic war against an enemy from beyond the boundaries of their universe. In a central chamber, Bruce and Niran stood before a massive holographic display, watching in horror as it played out scenes from the final days of the progenitor civilization. Entire worlds were consumed by swirling vortexes of otherworldly energy. Fleets of ships unlike anything they'd ever seen clashed in epic battles across the stars. This is bigger than we thought, Bruce said grimly. If we're not careful, we could be opening a door to something we're not prepared to face. Niran nodded solemnly. Perhaps we should seal this place off. Forget we ever found it. Bruce was silent for a long moment, weighing the risks against the potential rewards. Finally, he shook his head. No. The knowledge here. It could be the key to defending our galaxy against threats we can't even imagine. We press on. Niran met his gaze and nodded. Agreed, but we proceed with extreme caution. And so, surrounded by the echoes of a long-dead civilization and the looming shadow of an interdimensional threat, Bruce and Niran began the monumental task of studying the Progenitor Archive. Every discovery brought new wonders and new dangers. They worked tirelessly, knowing that the fate of their own civilizations, perhaps the entire galaxy, might hinge on what they learned here. Bruce's hands trembled as he inputted commands into the Endeavor's navigation console. The vast expanse of space stretched before them, but his mind remained trapped in the horrific events that had unfolded in the Progenitor repository. Set course for Alliance headquarters, he ordered, his voice cracking. Maximum warp! Lieutenant Chen nodded silently, her own eyes red-rimmed from tears. The bridge crew worked in somber efficiency, the weight of their recent ordeal hanging heavy in the air. As the stars streaked by outside, Bruce retreated to his ready room. He slumped into his chair, staring blankly at the wall. The image of Niran's face in those final moments burned in his mind, the drive, the fear, the acceptance. A chime at the door roused him from his stupor. Enter, he called out. Dr. Amelia Rodriguez stepped inside, her medical tricorder in hand. Captain, I need to run some tests. The energy discharge from the entity's containment. Bruce waved her off. Later, doctor. We have more pressing concerns. He stood and strode to the view screen, activating a secure channel to Alliance Command. Admiral Hawkins' weathered face appeared on the screen. Bruce, what's wrong? You look like hell. Bruce took a deep breath. Admiral, we've encountered a threat unlike anything we've ever faced. I'm initiating Protocol Omega. Hawkins' eyes widened. My God, are you certain? Completely. We need to mobilize every available resource. This entity? It's beyond our comprehension. If it escapes... Bruce trailed off, unable to vocalize the unthinkable. For the next several hours, Bruce briefed the Admiral on everything they had discovered. The Progenitor's fall, the nature of the interdimensional being, and the risky move that had led to its containment. With each word, the gravity of the situation settled deeper into both men's bones. As the Endeavor neared Alliance space, Bruce gathered his senior staff in the conference room. The faces around the table were haggard 
still processing the trauma they had endured. I know we've all suffered a tremendous loss, Bruce began, his voice thick with emotion. Niran, he gave everything to protect us, to protect our entire reality. We owe it to him to ensure his sacrifice wasn't in vain. He activated a holographic display, showing the schematics they had managed to salvage from the Progenitor Archive. This entity is contained for now, but we can't assume it will stay that way forever. We need to be ready. Bruce outlined a series of initiatives, enhancing sensor arrays to detect interdimensional anomalies, adapting Progenitor Shield technology to defend against extra-dimensional attacks, and establishing a dedicated task force to study the entity and develop potential countermeasures. As he spoke, Bruce could see the spark of willpower igniting in his crew's eyes. The shock and grief were still present, but now there was purpose, a drive to face this cosmic horror head-on. We're entering uncharted territory, Bruce concluded. The challenges ahead will push us to our limits and beyond, but together, humans, Denobulans, and every other race in the Alliance, will face this threat. We'll honor Niran's memory by ensuring that no matter what comes through that interdimensional rift, we'll be ready for it. The Endeavor dropped out of warp on the outskirts of Alliance space. As they approached the massive space station that served as the heart of their interstellar coalition, Bruce stood at the helm. His eyebrows furrowed as he contemplated the monumental task that lay ahead. The entity was contained, but for how long? And when it inevitably broke free, would they be prepared to face the unfathomable? Bruce didn't have the answers, but he knew one thing with absolute certainty. They would fight. For Neron, for the progenitors, and for the very fabric of reality itself. The years following the containment of the interdimensional entity were marked by feverish preparation. Bruce Adams, his hair now streaked with gray, spent countless hours poring over reports and schematics in the newly established Interdimensional Defense Command. Another breakthrough, sir, announced Dr. Evelyn Chen, sliding a data pad across Bruce's desk. We've managed to replicate the entity's energy signature on a microscopic scale. Bruce studied the readouts, his brow furrowed. Good work, doctor, but we need more. Every second counts. As Bruce immersed himself in the ceaseless work of fortifying humanity's defenses, a Denobulan scout ship made a chilling discovery in the depths of uncharted space. The bridge of the Defiance thrummed with nervous energy as Bruce stood before the assembled crew. Human and Denobulan faces stared back at him, united in purpose. We don't know what we're flying into, Bruce said, his voice steady. But whatever's out there, we face it together. Commander Kalin, the Denobulan combat specialist, nodded grimly. My team is ready, sir. We won't let you down. As the Defiance dropped out of warp, the view screen filled with a sight that made Bruce's blood run cold. A massive, swirling vortex of energy pulsed before them, its chaotic surface crackling with familiar, otherworldly power. My God, whispered Dr. Chen. It's just like... Her words were cut short as the ship lurched violently. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks, plunging the bridge into darkness. Report! Bruce shouted, clinging to a railing as the deck pitched beneath him. All systems are down, came the panicked reply. We're dead in space. Before Bruce could respond, the view screen lit up with a terrifying sight. Ships, if they could be called that, poured from the vortex. Their forms shifted and writhed composed of the same energy as the imprisoned entity. Harbingers, Bruce breathed, a chill running down his spine. The alien vessels swarmed toward the defenseless defiance, weapons flaring with impossible energies. The ship shuddered under the assault, hull integrity alarms blaring. All non-essential personnel, abandon ship, Bruce ordered, his mind racing. He turned to Commander Kalin. We need a plan, fast. As escape pods jettisoned from the dying ship, Bruce and Kalen huddled over a flickering console. The experimental progenitor tech, Bruce said. If we overload the warp nacelles... Kalen's eyes widened. It could create a spatial distortion. But sir, the ship won't survive that kind of strain. Bruce nodded grimly. Neither will they. 
With practiced efficiency, they initiated the risky move. The Defiance's engines screamed in protest as reality itself seemed to warp around them. The Harbinger ships twisted and distorted, drawn inexorably into the growing maelstrom. Bruce and Kalen sprinted for the last remaining shuttle as the ship tore itself apart around them. They barely cleared the hangar bay when the Defiance exploded in a blinding flash of light, taking the Harbinger fleet with it. In the aftermath, as the survivors regrouped aboard the battered shuttle, the full weight of their discovery settled in. Bruce's voice was heavy as he addressed the assembled crew. This was just the beginning, he said. The entity is coming and we need to be ready. Within hours, Bruce's urgent call echoed across subspace, rallying the forces of the human Denobulan Alliance. Ships of all sizes converged on the Sol system, forming the greatest armada ever assembled. On the bridge of the flagship, Bruce stood before a holographic display of the gathered fleet. Thousands of ships stretched as far as the eye could see, a testament to the unity forged in the face of cosmic horror. The plan is simple. Bruce explained to his assembled commanders. We lure the entity into our trap and hit it with everything we've got. He gestured to a pulsing point on the display. The Denobulans have provided us with quantum singularity technology. When the entity enters the kill zone, we'll trigger the device and tear it apart at the subatomic level. As Bruce finished outlining the strategy, a sensor operator called out in alarm. Sir, the wormhole, it's opening! All eyes turned to the main view screen as space itself seemed to tear open. A blinding surge of energy erupted from the breach, and with it came a sight that defied comprehension. The entity, a writhing mass of impossible geometries and reality-warping power, emerged from the rift. In its wake, an endless tide of Harbinger ships flooded into normal space. Bruce's voice cut through the stunned silence on the bridge. All ships, battle stations, engage the enemy! With that command, the greatest battle in the history of known space began. Thousands of allied ships surged forward, weapons blazing against the otherworldly invaders. The void lit up with the fury of their desperate stand against the darkness that threatened to consume all of reality. The void of space erupted in a cacophony of weapons fire as Bruce's voice rang out across the comm channels. All ships engage! Concentrate fire on the entity! Thousands of allied vessels surged forward, their powerful energy weapons unleashing a devastating barrage against the writhing mass of the interdimensional being. Beams of searing light and volleys of photon torpedoes slammed into the entity's form, yet it barely seemed to register the assault. Bruce leaned forward in his command chair, eyes fixed on the tactical display. Status report! Our weapons are having minimal effect, sir, replied the tactical officer her fingers flying over the console. The entity's energy signature is fluctuating, but it's not weakening. Bruce's expression resolute. He tapped his comm badge. Atoms to Denobulan science fleet. Initiate singularity generation. Now! On the console, a group of sleek Denobulan vessels moved into position. Their hulls glowed with an eerie blue light as they activated their experimental quantum technology. Space itself seemed to warp and twist around them. Suddenly, a pinprick of absolute darkness bloomed at the heart of the battlefield. The artificial black hole grew rapidly, its immense gravitational pull beginning to tug at the entity's energetic form. For a moment, hope surged through Bruce's chest. Then, without warning, the entity lashed out. A wave of distorted reality rippled across space. Allied ships caught in its path simply ceased to exist, their matter scattered across dimensions. Entire battle groups vanished in the blink of an eye. Evasive maneuvers, Bruce shouted, gripping the arms of his chair as the flagship shuddered violently. All ships, fall back and regroup. But there was no time. Harbinger vessels poured through the dimensional rift, their impossible geometries defying the laws of physics. They tore through the Allied defensive lines with terrifying ease. Bruce's mind raced. Kalen, he barked into the comm. You're clear for Operation Trojan. Go. On the front lines, Commander Kalen and his team of elite operatives launched their assault. Their heavily modified shuttlecraft weaved through the chaos, dodging energy blasts and debris. 
With pinpoint precision, they latched onto the hull of a Harbinger ship. Kalen's voice crackled over the comm as his team breached the alien vessel. We're in. This place, it's like nothing we've ever seen. The walls are shifting, changing. We're moving to the control center now. Bruce could only listen and wait as Kalen's team fought their way through the Harbinger ship. Minutes felt like hours. Then, finally... We've done it! Kalen's triumphant voice filled the bridge. We've seized control of their transdimensional systems, initiating attack sequence now. A barrage of energy beams lanced out from the captured Harbinger vessel, bypassing the entity's defenses and striking deep into its core. The being's form wavered, its grip on reality weakening. But the entity was far from defeated. It summoned the full might of its cosmic powers, unleashing a storm of spatial distortions and lances of pure energy that threatened to consume the entire Allied fleet. Bruce knew they were out of time. He opened a channel to the Denobulan science vessels. This is Admiral Adams. Increase singularity intensity to maximum. I repeat, maximum power. Sir, the Denobulan captain's voice was strained. Our ships can't withstand that level of output. We'll be torn apart. Bruce closed his eyes for a brief moment. Understood, Captain. But it's our only chance. Do it. The artificial black hole surged in size and power, putting impossible strain on the Denobulan vessels. Bruce watched as the entity turned its full attention to this new threat, momentarily ceasing its assault on the fleet. Now's our chance, Bruce said, his voice steady. All ships, target these coordinates. Fire everything we've got. The combined firepower of the Allied Armada converged on a single point within the entity's writhing form. For a heartbeat, nothing seemed to happen. Then, with a silent explosion that shook the very fabric of space-time, the entity's energies began to buckle and destabilize. A cheer went up across the comm channels, but it was short-lived. A massive new rift tore open behind the wounded entity disgorging wave after wave of Harbinger reinforcements. Bruce's heart sank as he watched the fresh Harbinger forces overwhelm his battered fleet. They were stretched beyond the breaking point, with no reserves left to call upon. In that moment, Bruce knew there was only one option left. His voice was heavy as he gave the order. This is Admiral Adams to all Denobulan science vessels. Overload your singularity generators. Prepare to detonate on my mark. He paused, allowing the weight of his words to sink in. Then, with a deep breath, Bruce spoke the fateful command. Mark. The Denobulan vessels exploded in a blinding flash of light, releasing a torrent of exotic energies that tore through the heart of the entity. The shockwave scattered the Harbinger forces, sending them tumbling back through their rifts. As the light faded... Bruce stared at the view screen in stunned silence. The entity's vast form was unraveling, dissipating into the void. The rift that had brought it into our reality collapsed, sealing shut with a final burst of energy. The bridge of Bruce's flagship was eerily quiet, the crew struggling to process what they had just witnessed. Damage reports and casualty lists began to pour in, each one a stark reminder of the cost of their victory. Bruce stood his legs unsteady, and looked out at the debris-strewn battlefield. Countless ships, both Allied and Harbinger, floated lifelessly in the void. The survivors were already beginning to regroup, but their numbers were a fraction of what they had been at the start of the battle. As he watched the remnants of his fleet limp towards the rally point, Bruce knew that this was only the beginning. The entity was defeated, but the threat it represented remained. There would be more battles to come, more horrors from beyond the veil of reality. Bruce squared his shoulders, ready to face the monumental task ahead. They would rebuild. They would prepare. And when the next threat emerged from the depths of the cosmos, they would be ready. The debris field from the cataclysmic battle slowly dispersed over the years, but the scars it left on the psyche of the human Denobulan alliance ran far deeper. Grand Admiral Bruce Adams stood before a massive holographic display, studying the intricate web of fortifications and early warning systems now spanning key sectors. Status report on the quantum shield generators? 
Bruce asked, his voice carrying the weight of years of hard-fought experience. A young lieutenant snapped to attention. All primary nodes are online and at full capacity, sir. The secondary grid is at 89% efficiency and rising. Bruce nodded, allowing himself a small measure of satisfaction. The technological leaps they'd made by reverse engineering Harbinger Tech had been staggering. He watched as a test firing of a new energy cannon obliterated an asteroid, the beam twisting reality itself as it passed. Just then, an urgent alert flashed across the display. Bruce's blood ran cold as he read the incoming data. Get me Captain Valen, he barked. Now! Within minutes, Bruce was briefing the decorated officer on the anomalous energy readings detected near the galactic rim. Valen's face was grim as he absorbed the implications. We can't risk another incursion, Bruce said. Take your rapid response fleet and investigate. But Valen, be careful out there. We don't know what we're dealing with. Days later, Valen's ships dropped out of warp at the coordinates of the energy signature. The bridge crew collectively held their breath as they took in the sight before them. A massive Harbinger vessel hung motionless against the backdrop of unfamiliar stars, its once fluid form now frozen and lifeless. Valen steeled himself as he gave the order to board. The away team moved cautiously through the alien corridors, their footsteps echoing in the eerie silence. Ensign Chen's voice crackled over the comm, tinged with a mix of fear and awe. Captain, you need to see this, she said. We've detected something coming from what appears to be a central data core. It's unlike anything in our records. Valen's gut twisted. Pull your team back. We need reinforcements and a dedicated science team. I'm contacting Grand Admiral Adams. Hours later, Naren stood before the pulsing data core, his father's legacy weighing heavily on his shoulders. With trembling hands, he interfaced his equipment with the alien technology. The resulting data stream hit him like a physical blow. Naren stumbled back, his eyes wide with horror as the true nature of the Harbinger threat unfolded before him. By the gods, he whispered. We had no idea. In the heart of the Alliance capital, Bruce sat motionless as he absorbed Noreen's report. The Paramount Entity. A cosmic predator of unfathomable power and age. And it was coming. He called an emergency session of the Alliance leadership, his voice steady as he laid out the stakes. We stand at the precipice, Bruce said, looking each leader in the eye. Everything we've built, everything we've sacrificed for, it all comes down to this moment. We must strike first, or all of reality will fall. The council chamber erupted into heated debate. Some argued for further defensive measures, others for diplomatic outreach to other spacefaring races. But as the hours wore on, the grim reality of their situation became undeniable. In the end, the vote was unanimous. They would commit everything to one final desperate assault on the Paramount Entity's domain. As the greatest armada in the history of the Alliance assembled, Bruce stood on the bridge of his flagship. He turned to Noreen, seeing the same mix of drive and fear he felt in his own heart. Your father would be proud, Bruce said softly. Are you ready for this? Naren nodded, his teeth clenched. As ready as we'll ever be, sir. Bruce turned back to the view screen watching as thousands upon thousands of ships fell into formation. With a deep breath, he gave the order that would decide the fate of all existence. All ships, prepare for trans-dimensional jump. May whatever gods are out there have mercy on our souls. In a blinding flash of light, the armada vanished, plunging into the cosmic void to confront an enemy older than time itself. The armada burst through the cosmic veil, Ships tumbling and spinning as they emerged into a realm that defied comprehension. Bruce's stomach lurched as his flagship stabilized, the view screen filled with a kaleidoscope of impossible colors and shapes. Status report, he barked, gripping his chair as the deck shuddered beneath him. Transdimensional drives holding, Admiral, a technician called out, her voice strained. But we're detecting massive energy fluctuations throughout the fleet. Before Bruce could respond, space itself seemed to ripple. A barrage of energy lances sliced through the void, carving gashes in allied ships. 
Screams and static filled the comm channels as crews scrambled to respond. Return fire, Bruce ordered. All ships, activate transdimensional weapons. The human and Denobulan gunners, trained for weeks but facing the unknown, engaged their new armaments. Streams of crackling energy erupted from the Allied vessels, tearing holes in the fabric of this alien reality. Bruce watched in awe as entire sections of space collapsed, taking entity constructs with them. Admiral, Naren's voice cut through the chaos. Our conventional tactics won't work here. We need to press the advantage while we have it. Bruce nodded, knowing what had to be done. Prepare a strike team. We're going in. Minutes later, Bruce stood in the teleportation chamber, surrounded by the most elite soldiers humanity and its allies had to offer. Each was clad in armor that pulsed with exotic energies, designed to keep them alive in this hostile domain. Listen up, Bruce addressed the team. We have one shot at this. The entropy inducers are our only chance of stopping the entity. Whatever happens, whatever you see, we push forward. Understood? A chorus of affirmatives rang out. Bruce met Noreen's eyes, saw the perseverance there, and gave the order to teleport. They materialized in a maelstrom of fractured space-time. The ground beneath their feet shifted and warped, threatening to tear them apart. Bruce activated his grav boots, anchoring himself as he signaled the team forward. They fought their way through reality-bending terrain, each step a battle against physics gone mad. Tendrils of pure energy lashed out, seeking to unmake them. Bruce watched in horror as one soldier was caught, his form twisting and unraveling before vanishing completely. Keep moving, he shouted, firing his weapon at a coalescing mass of sentient geometry. The blast shattered it, sending shards of broken space flying in all directions. As they neared the heart of the entity's domain, a wall of psychic energy slammed into them. Bruce stumbled, his pupils dilating from the assault. Through blurred vision he saw a towering construct of impossible angles and pulsing light materialize before them. Naren grabbed his arm. Bruce, this is it. The entity's core consciousness. We can't break through, but... He hesitated, then squared his shoulders. I can give you a chance. Get those inducers to the center. I'll hold it off. Before Bruce could protest, Naren charged forward, his body glowing with transdimensional energy. He slammed into the psychic construct, his form melding with it as he fought to keep it distracted. Go, Naren's voice echoed in Bruce's mind. Finish this. Heart pounding. Bruce led the remaining shock troopers past the writhing mass of energy that was Narin and the entity's avatar. They sprinted towards a pulsing vortex of power that could only be the cosmic heart of their enemy. As they ran, Bruce clutched the entropy inducers, knowing that the fate of all existence rested in his hands. Hands. The weight of countless lives rested upon this moment. Bruce and his team pressed forward their armor crackling with energy as it deflected the entity's defenses. Reality itself seemed to bend and twist around them, the very fabric of space warping in impossible ways. Corporal Jansen screamed as a tendril of pure entropy lashed out, disintegrating his left arm in an instant. Keep moving, Bruce shouted, his voice raw with exertion. We're almost there. As they neared the pulsating heart of the entity, a wave of psychic energy slammed into them. Bruce stumbled, his mind assaulted by visions of failure and despair. He saw Earth burning, the Denobulan homeworld shattered, all of reality unraveling at the seams. No, he growled, forcing the images from his mind. It's not real. Focus. But the assault was relentless. To his left, Private Chen fell to his knees, clawing at his helmet as he howled in anguish. Sergeant Velik, the stoic Denobulan veteran, simply stood motionless, his eyes vacant and unfocused. One by one, Bruce watched his team succumb to the entity's mental onslaught. Their minds, pushed beyond human limits, simply shut down in the face of cosmic horror. Bruce stood alone, the last line of defense against oblivion. His legs trembled with exhaustion, every step a monumental effort. But the memory of Naren's sacrifice of countless others who had given everything in this war, drove him forward. The heart of the entity loomed before him, 
a swirling vortex of impossible energies that hurt to look at directly. Bruce's hands shook as he activated the entropy inducers, the devices humming with power. With a final, desperate surge of strength, Bruce hurled the inducers into the pulsing heart. For a heartbeat, nothing happened. Then, reality itself seemed to scream. The heart's energies began to distort and unravel, spreading outward in a wave of pure chaos. Bruce watched in awe and terror as the very structure of the entity's domain began to collapse around him. As the destruction accelerated, Bruce felt a horrifying certainty settle over him. He was trapped, caught within the event horizon of this cosmic cataclysm. There would be no dramatic escape, no last-minute rescue. Bruce closed his eyes, accepting his fate. He thought of Earth, of the Denobulan allies who had become like family. He hoped they would understand the sacrifice that had been made here, at the edge of existence. As the unraveling reality consumed him, Bruce Adams allowed himself a small smile. They had won. The entity was defeated. All of existence would continue, even if he would not be there to see it. In the cosmos beyond, the Allied Armada watched in stunned silence as a blinding implosion of energy erupted where the entity's domain had been. Ships rocked violently as shockwaves rippled through space and time. Captain Tharik of the Denobulan science vessel, Eternal Seeker, stared at his sensors in disbelief. By the gods, he whispered. The entire realm, it's gone. Just gone. As the cosmic storm subsided, the grim reality settled over the assembled fleet. There was no sign of Bruce or his team. No trace remained of their heroic last stand. The entity's threat had been erased from existence, but at a terrible cost. Admiral Chen's voice crackled over the fleet-wide comm, heavy with emotion. This is Admiral Chen to all ships. The entity has been defeated. Grand Admiral Adams and his team did not survive the assault. A stunned silence fell over the comm channels broken only by muffled sobs and whispered prayers. The war that had pushed humanity and its allies to the brink was over, but victory tasted like ashes. In the days that followed, as the fleet limped home to lick its wounds, the full weight of what had transpired began to sink in. Memorials were erected on a dozen worlds, honoring those who had given everything to save reality itself. On Earth, in the heart of the Alliance capital, a towering statue was unveiled. It depicted Bruce Adams and Naren, standing back to back, their faces set with perseverance as they stared down cosmic horrors. The plaque at its base read simply, They stood against the darkness so that we might see the light. Yet, even as the Alliance mourned and celebrated, a quiet unease settled over its leadership. They had faced down one incomprehensible threat, but the vastness of the cosmos suddenly seemed more daunting than ever before. In a secure briefing room, deep beneath the streets of New Geneva, the surviving admirals and scientists gathered. Admiral Chen. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.